In this video, we're going to look at the factors that affect the ability of an off-road vehicle to climb slopes. Now, as this is a fundamentals video, we're going to take a slightly simplified approach to the way we do this. So, we're not going to think too much about traction theory, uh, and instead we'll use coefficient of friction uh, in place of uh, a proper traction theory. Uh, and we're also not going to think too much about weight transfer. There are a number of factors that affect the ability of an off-road vehicle to climb a certain slope. So the most obvious one is how steep that slope is. Obviously as the slope gets steeper then it gets harder for the vehicle to climb it. And we'll look in more detail at why that might be shortly. Uh, the other factors that affect it are things like well, how much torque does the vehicle have available and in turn, how much thrust is it able to produce to push the vehicle up the slope? Uh, there are also considerations like what the surface of the slope is like. So what material it is, whether it's uh, tarmac or soil or gravel, uh, and the coefficient of friction of that surface. Uh, and also considerations of things like or how smooth that surface is and whether there are obstructions on the way up, tree roots, ruts, those kinds of things. We'll ignore all of that for the time being and go for a fairly simplified scenario. So, the effect of slope. When a vehicle is sitting on level ground, all of its mass is acting down through its tyres into the ground. Uh, so all of that mass is being reacted by the ground. Now, we need to think about the way coefficients of friction work. So effectively what a coefficient of friction says is for the amount of force I push down with, uh, a certain proportion of that will be available as longitudinal force. So if I push down with a force of 1 newton into a surface that has a coefficient of friction of 1, then I can produce 1 newton of longitudinal force. So, a coefficient of friction of 1 is, well, effectively the highest you can get. So that might be something like uh, rubber against tarmac. A more slippery surface, so if you think about something like ice, so rubber on ice, the coefficient of friction of that might only be 0.1. So effectively, if I push down with a force of 1 newton, I can only generate 0.1 newtons of longitudinal force. So if we think about what's happening on a slope, in order to climb the slope, I need to generate enough force to be able to overcome the downslope forces pulling the vehicle back down the slope. We call the force that the tyre is able to produce thrust, just like thrust from a jet engine or from a rocket. Now, that thrust is being produced by the interaction between the tyre contact patch and the surface. It's not being produced like a jet or a rocket does. But the term is exactly the same. So what that means is just the force that's available to push the vehicle along. The amount of thrust that's available is limited by the amount of torque uh, the engine and transmission are able to produce at the tyre, and is also limited by the coefficient of friction between the tyre and the surface. So if you're on a low coefficient of friction surface, say an icy road, then you're not going to be able to produce as much thrust as you could on a high coefficient of friction surface, like dry tarmac. With a vehicle sitting on a slope, a certain proportion of the weight of the vehicle is acting down the slope, and that proportion increases as the angle of the slope increases. So when we're on the flat, there is no downslope force, obviously, because there's no slope. And if you're on a vertical surface, so if you manage to get the vehicle to sit on a wall, then all of the force would be acting down the wall. It'd be all be acting down the slope. Somewhere in between, we end up with some effect in between. So as the slope gets steeper, the interslope force goes down and the downslope force goes up. So there's more force pulling the vehicle down the slope than there is force acting into the slope. Mathematically, we can calculate the interslope and downslope forces using trigonometry. Now, that might produce some terror. Um, don't worry too much about the maths at this stage, but to say very simply, uh, if we want to calculate the downslope force, 
we can use the sine of the angle of the slope. So if we multiply the weight of the vehicle by the sine of the angle of the slope, then that will give us the downslope force. And if we multiply the weight of the vehicle by the cos of the angle of the slope, that will give us the interslope force. So we can work out how hard the vehicle is pushing into the slope, and we can work out how, uh, how hard the vehicle is being pulled down the slope. Now, I have to confess, as somebody with a doctorate in engineering, that I can never remember which way around those things go. And the simplest way to do it is if you work out what the sine of 90 is. So if the, if the angle of the slope is 90 degrees, then your slope is effectively vertical, and the sine of 90 is 1. So that means that all of the force is acting down the slope. And the cos of 90 is 0, so there's no interslope force. So you, if you forget whether you should do sine or cos, then just do sine and cos of 90 and see which one is 1. And the one that is 1, in this case sine, is the downslope force. So to illustrate how this works, Let's try a couple of examples. So first of all, we'll have a slope that has an angle of 30 degrees and a coefficient of friction of 1. So the sine of 30 is 0.5. So that means the force acting down the slope is half the weight of the vehicle. The cos of 30 is 0.866 or 0.87 if you like. So 87% of the weight of the vehicle is pushing into the slope. Now if we have a vehicle that has a weight of 20 kilonewtons, 20,000 newtons, then the force acting down the slope will be 10,000 newtons, and the force acting into the slope will be 17,400. Now if the coefficient of friction of the surface of the slope is 1, that means all of that 17,400 newtons is available as traction. So we've got 10,000 newtons acting down the slope, and we have 17,400 newtons available as traction. So the vehicle should be able to climb that slope. Now we're assuming that the, the vehicle has enough torque and can generate enough thrust to get up that slope. But essentially what we're saying is the vehicle has enough, enough traction to be able to get up the slope. So now if we think about a 60 degree slope, and a 60 degree slope is extremely steep, now the sine of 60 is 0.87 or 0.866, so we have 87% of the weight of the vehicle acting down the slope, and the cos of 60 is 0.5, so we only have 10,000 newtons acting into the slope. Again, our coefficient of friction is 1, so we have 10,000 newtons of thrust available, or 10,000 newtons of traction available, uh, but we have 17,400 newtons of force pulling the vehicle down the slope. So we don't have enough traction, even at a coefficient of friction of 1, to be able to climb up that slope. Now that isn't to say that it's impossible to climb a 60 degree slope, but it is impossible to start on a 60 degree slope from a standstill. The way you can climb that slope would be to approach it at speed with some momentum and you can use that momentum to carry the vehicle up the slope. But from a standing start, if you were to stop on that 60 degree slope with a coefficient of friction of 1, the vehicle wouldn't have enough traction to be able to start again. In fact, it wouldn't have enough traction to be able to stay on the slope in the first place. So now what happens if our slope is icy? So an icy surface has a coefficient of friction of about 0.1. So if, if we think about our 30 degree slope again, so the sine of 30 is 0.5, so we have about 10,000 newtons acting down the slope, and the cos of 30 is uh, 0.866 or 0.87, so we have 17,400 newtons acting into the slope, but remember, we have a coefficient of friction of 0.1 because the surface is icy. So now we have to multiply that 17,400 by 0.1. So we have 1,740 newtons of traction available or thrust available. 
So remember there's 10,000 newtons acting down the slope, but now we only have 1,740 newtons of thrust available. So again, we can't overcome that slope. The vehicle couldn't climb that 30 degree slope because now the coefficient of friction is only 0.1 and the vehicle can't get enough traction to climb up that slope. So now let's think about the effect of torque. So if you think about a relatively respectable small diesel engine, it's probably going to be producing something like two or three hundred newton meters of torque at the flywheel. But that's actually not what we're interested in at the moment. What we're really interested in is how much torque do we have available at the wheels. So for something like an SUV, it won't be unusual to have about 5,000 newton meters of torque at the wheel. And it wouldn't be unusual for that wheel to be about a meter in diameter. So the radius of that wheel would be half a meter. So if we have 5,000 newton meters of torque going into a wheel that has a diameter of one meter, a radius of 0.5 meters, that'll produce 10,000 newtons of thrust at the contact patch. So going back to our 30 degree slope, uh, conveniently for our example, the downslope force is 10,000 newtons, and we can produce 10,000 newtons of thrust at the tyre contact patch. Now, if we think about the example where the surface is icy, where we, can only, uh, where we only have 1,740 newtons of traction available, we can only produce 1,740 newtons of thrust. It doesn't matter how much torque you have available, because you can only produce that torque by reacting it against something. So if the surface won't let you produce that much thrust, then you can't produce that much torque. It doesn't matter how torquey your engine is, or how many gears you've got, essentially the amount of torque you can produce at the wheels is going to be limited by the amount of traction you have available at the surface. So to summarise, the ability of a vehicle to climb a slope is affected by the angle of that slope. Obviously the steeper it gets, the harder it is to climb the slope. Um, the coefficient of friction between the tyres and the surface, and that's affected by what the surface is made of and what it's covered in, and the amount of thrust that the vehicle is able to produce at the tyre contact patches. And that's affected by the coefficient of friction and by the amount of torque that is available at the wheels, which in turn is going to be affected by the transmission, the, the gear ratios, uh, and the amount of uh, torque that the engine can produce. The methods we, we've used here are quite simplified, but they're quite useful for getting a first pass at working out whether a vehicle is going to be able to climb a slope or not. Uh, and working out what the capabilities of a vehicle might be. In other videos we'll talk about uh, the amount of uh, torque that's available at the wheels and how you calculate that, the amount of thrust that you can produce, the effects of tire, different types of tyre and so on, and we'll look in more detail at the, the complexities of working out what's going on at the tyre contact patch. So if you want more content about off-road vehicle engineering, don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, then don't forget to press the like button. Thanks for watching.